Okay, then we'll invite uh, Craig Klein from Rush to the stage. He was already announced by Rochelle in the previous talk about the uh, effect of higher dose gantonerumab uh, in relation to lowering amyloid plaque burden. Thank you, Philip. Good, e good evening, everyone. It's, it's a great pleasure to be here tonight to share with you for the first time the PET imaging results that we see from the open label extension. Um, as, as you've just heard, uh, Marguerite Road and, and Scarlet Road are higher dose gantanerumab are being investigated to explore the safety and pharmaco pharmacodynamics of, of, of this molecule. And obviously, since uh, gantanerumab's main mechanism of action is amyloid plaque removal, PET plays a very important role. These are my co-authors and my disclosures. If you've just heard, uh, gantanerumab is a fully human uh, monoclonal antibody that activates microglia to effectively engulf, engulf amyloid plaque and, and, and remove it. The, the first biological evidence has, has been demonstrated both preclinically and, and in ex vivo studies, as you see in the center of the screen in this triple labeled uh, preclinical study. It's also been demonstrated in clinical studies, as we see on the right-hand side of the screen, where a moderate amount of amyloid plaque was seen to, to be removed on, on doses that we now know are uh, sub-therapeutic, sub and this could be done in a time span as, as, as little as six months. Now, what I'll be sharing with you today will be confirmation of the hypothesis that considerably higher levels of amyloid are reduced when higher dosing of uh, gantanerumab is, is, is used. You've just seen the overall structure of the open label and structures and, 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 and the goals. Um, I'll focus now on the PET substudy component, component of this. Now, both the Scarlet Road and Margaret Road open label extensions, or OLEs as I'll call them, did have PET substudies. A total of 81 subjects were enrolled at, at baseline. And um, you, you might have guessed by, by seeing the titration schedules that the dosing regimens that each of these patients received was quite, quite different, quite heterogeneous, as well as the pretreatment period before the start of the open label extension. So therefore, to, to make the, the presentation more straightforward, we, we've divided the analysis into three cohorts. The first of these is the Scarlet Road cohort pooled together. The second is the Margaret Road non-pretreated subjects, in other words, those subjects that were in the placebo arm of the Margaret Road study. And then finally, the Margaret Road pretreated pre study. Now, another factor in the analysis, since one of the main objectives was to assess high-dose plaque removal, is to define a, a threshold for what we consider high-dose to be. For this analysis, we considered high-dose to be those subjects who had received six or more doses of 900 to 1,200 milligrams of gantanerabab during the open label titration period. So of the 81 subjects who received baseline, 40 patients met, met this high dose criteria, and, that, and that's the data that, that, that you'll be seeing in just a bit. In terms of imaging, fluorbetapyr was used for all subjects. Images were acquired at week 52 of the open label period, and then also prior to open label dosing. Characteristics of the three cohorts are, are summarized here. Uh, as, uh, if you look at the first line, you can see the numbers of, of patients that were enrolled in, e in each cohort. Uh, first, for the Margaret Road non pretreated group, 14 patients were enrolled. For the Margaret Road pretreated group, 17 patients were, were enrolled. And for the Scarlet group, nine patients were enrolled. Now, I won't go through all of, 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 of the characteristics here, but I do want to point out a few things that, 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 that should bear some weight in your mind as, as, as we hear the, these results. First of all, if we look at the baseline PET SUVR value for, for patients entering that, the, the open label extension, we can see that those patients in the Scarlet Road study were a bit lower, actually quite a bit lower than those in the Margaret Road, where we have 1.45 SUVR for Scarlet versus 1.7 and 1.79 for, for Marguerite. We also see that the scarlet patients have a mean, in the next line, a mean uh, number of months on high dose that is quite a bit less than those in the Marguerite uh, Road arms at 5.7 versus 9 and, and 6.8 for the Marguerite. And this is simply due to the, tit the titration schedule. The scarlet road patients were titrated a bit slower, um, as were the, the Margaret Road non-pretreated subjects. 
Um, finally, the median time between the week 52 scan and the baseline scan does vary a bit, and this was because a new baseline was only acquired if a pre-existing scan from the double blind was, was not present within a nine to 12 month period. Nearly all of the Scarlet Road patients had a new baseline scan, so their mean time between images was 54 months, but it's a bit longer for the other two cohorts, 64 and 74 months. months. Weeks, should I say. Quantification methods are, are summarized here. As I mentioned before, all subjects received a floor beta peer scan. Uh, this was acquired as a 15 minute acquisition, uh, um, at, acquired at 15, 50 minutes post injection. Uh, to quantify change in amyloid burden, this, the standard uptake value ratio method was used, or the SUVR. And as most of you in, in, in this audience know, that's simply the ratio of PET uptake seen in a number of cortical target regions divided by a reference region. Now, the pre-specified SUVR methodology that we used in, in, in this methodology is exactly the same as that was used in previous Scarlet Road presentations at, at AAIC and I believe CTAT. Um, and these made use of a gray matter masked AAL atlas template-based approach that averaged together six cortical regions and then normalized these to cerebellar gray. Now, using this SUVR methodology, the threshold corresponding to amyloid positivity is equal to 1.40. And we determine this by a linear regression analysis of 110 ADNI subjects that have been analyzed both with this methodology um, and, and, the, and the published um, methods from, from the ADNI core lab. Finally, before I move to the results, just, just one reminder, uh, the results that you see are on absolute SUVR un units. I'll just remind you all that though directionally the same, if you're making comparisons between different studies on different monoclonal antibodies or different gantanirumab studies, the, the units are not exactly interchangeable unless the tracers are, are exactly the same, the methodology is the same, and the reference region is the same. So let, let's go to the, to, to the results. First, I'll start out with a reminder of what the results were at the lower dose. Here we see on the left-hand side of the screen results from the Scarlet Road double-blind study at two years. And we see that, indeed, there was a dose-dependent effect, and the maximum effect we see for the higher dose at 225 milligrams was 0.11 SUVR units. Here is what we see from the open-label extension. Now, again, this is a period of approximately 12 months of titration with all subjects meeting between uh, six and nine months at the high dose. And we can see right away that, that, the, that the amyloid reduction is considerably larger. For example, for the MR groups, for the Margaret Road groups, we're at 0.27 and 0.24. Scarlet Road is a bit less at 0.13, uh, but all considerably higher than the two-year period, two-year reduction seen at, at, at the lower doses. I think just as importantly, Compared to the model, these are very consistent with the model. And if you'll recall from, from Rochelle's presentation, this is a model that predicts a 26% reduction during a 20-month treatment period involving titration. Effectively, that would be about double the, the reduction that you see in these short-term open-label extension results and about four times the reduction that you see in the, in the Scarlet Road uh, double-blind. Here are a few example, patient, example images from, from five patients. You see the baseline images on the top and, and the week 52 images along the bottom. I've ordered these from left to right in increasing levels of, of SUVR reduction. Uh, for those of you that, that know PET, I think it, it, it's quite apparent that the image that you, images that you see at, at baseline are all very consistent with images uh, associated with patients that have amyloid pathology. The high tracer uptake, as you see in red, is both in the gray matter and the white matter of the brain. And this is very different from the appearance that you see after a year uh, at, at the week 52, where the uptake is primarily in the white matter of the brain and the images are, are very consistent with those that do not have amyloid pathology. Now we see these amyloid reductions are consistent across the different cohorts that we analyzed. And in addition, they're consistent on a patient-by-patient -patient basis. You can see that there's a slight trend, although the numbers are small, that if you begin with a high baseline value, you, uh, the reductions are, are at a faster rate. I think just as importantly, you can see that patients that begin with a low amyloid level also have their amyloid reduced. 
Recall that for this methodology, the amyloid positivity level is at about 1.4. Keep in mind that some of these patients had been pretreated, so it's not surprising that the baseline level for especially the Margaret Road pretreated group, for example, is, is near that level. But even starting with this low burden, that amyloid burden is decreased. In fact, that's perhaps one of the more important take-home messages um, regarding the results of, of this study. Here in, on the left hand, on the right-hand side of the graph, we can see the, a scatter plot for the SUVRs at baseline, and on the right, the SUVRs at week 52. We can see that after the one-year titration, again with six to nine months at the higher dose, approximately one-third of the subjects have amyloid levels that are brought below the amyloid positivity level threshold. So in, in other words, those patients have SUVR values that are consistent with an amyloid negative visual scan. And we all know from the registration studies of, of Florbetapir that this corresponds to an amyloid plaque level that is representative of spar as sparse to no neuritic plaques. So in summary, I think the data quite convincingly shows that indeed there is significantly greater amyloid reduction at the higher dosing levels of gantanarumab compared to previously used lower doses. We see that there is very consistent amyloid removal across the different subgroups that are analyzed and across individual subjects. And also that after a six to nine month period on high dose, approximately one third of subjects are below the amyloid positivity threshold. Now we see these as very, very encouraging biomarker re results. And as we move in, into the graduate one and phase two study, there is a great deal of op optimism that, that, that these studies will, will move through for success. Finally, I'd like to, to uh, conclude with acknowledgement. Great thanks to the patients, caregivers, and investigators uh, involved in the Marguerite and Scarlet Road open label extension studies. Also a big thanks to, to John Seibel and Ken Merrick and the team at Invicro for their assistance in the PET analysis. I'm happy to uh, answer any questions if there are any. Hello. Uh, um, I have two questions here. Um, so you show the reduction of the amyloid status. How about the cognitive test? Have you looked at the patients? Uh, if there's a cognitive test, there uh, becomes normal. The second question is, have you ever done a follow-up uh, examination of this patient? You show the amyloid status go down and I mean, if you don't stop the treatment for one year, would they come back again? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. First of all, regarding the cognitive monitoring, yes, we, yes, we are doing cognitive tests. Uh, the study has not been designed um, uh, to, 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 to detect changes in, in, in cognition. There's no placebo arm. Um, the numbers are, are quite small. But, but yes, this is something that, that we are certainly exploring. Um, um, re regarding follow-up for, for, for patients, um, before and after treatment, uh, th these, uh, this is an ongoing study. We're, we're right now at the point where we have a subset of, of the, the patients that are, in, that are fully enrolled at their one-year scan. Um, uh, sometime next year, we'll be having their two-year scan. So yes, we'll be following these as, as they continue on, on high dose. Uh, we're also doing retrospective analysis of, of the low-dose uh, patients, even though those numbers are strong. To, quite small to see what happens after dosing has been stopped, but that data is on, analysis is ongoing. I didn't have, have the chance to thank you for this uh, presentation before asking for the questions. Are there any more questions? Yeah, there's one, there's one question.